Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory for like part 6 or 7 by now to see how scientifically accurate this particular- hey. The X-10s are online. Gentlemen, I am now about to send a signal from this laptop through our local ISP, racing down fiber optic cable at the speed of light to San Francisco, bouncing off a satellite in geosynchronous orbit to Lisbon, Portugal, where the data packets will be handed off to submerge transatlantic cables terminating in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and transferred across the continent via microwave relays back to our ISP and the X-10 receiver attached to this. Lamp. <laughs> So what Howard just described was the path that an internet signal takes to the point where you click a button on your mouse and it actually gets received on the other side. Even if you're wireless, what's going to happen is that wireless signal that you just outputted is going to be taken in by a modem and it's going to be wired to its destination and then wireless again and then wired again. Like this is just an ongoing process. The idea here of sending your internet signal through like where they are in California to like Portugal and then to like space and all that stuff, we can do that right now. If you use a VPN on your computer, it'll reroute your IP address so that people don't actually know where you are when you're using the internet. Sheldon, why is this letter in the trash? Well, there's always the possibility that a trash can spontaneously formed around the letter, but Occam's razor would suggest that someone threw it out. <laughs> Occam's razor is a fun concept. It's really simple. It's ironic. <laughs> Occam's razor basically suggests that the simplest answer to a question is most often the correct one. This idea was first introduced to me when I was in college studying, um, I don't know if it was Calc 2 or Calc 3, but our professor basically said always apply Occam's razor to these questions. The simplest answer to a differential equation is most often the correct one. And you can apply this principle to um, actually anywhere in life. It, it's not just like a physics or a math thing. Like if, um, okay, here's one. So if you were to go to a doctor's office and you went and you were like, okay, um, I have a headache, right? Your doctor could say, well, you could have a brain tumor, right? That is a possibility, but Occam's razor would suggest that you probably just didn't get enough sleep or someone like hit you on the head or, right? It's like the simplest so like answer to the fact that you have a headache is not that you have a brain tumor. It's probably that you just didn't get enough sleep. Look, I know Leonard values you as a friend, and he told me himself that without your little idea, there's no way he could have come up with this whole experiment thing. <laughs> Excuse me, little idea? Yeah, I mean, he tried to explain it to me. I didn't really understand of it. Of course but... you didn't. He said little idea? Uh, well, no. I mean, not, not, in, not in those words. In what words, then, exactly? Um, you know, gee, the exact words aren't really... It's more the spirit in which what he said... What did he say? You had a lucky hunch. Uh, hey, Sheldon, I've been thinking. Instead of arguing about this, why don't, don't you ever speak to me again? What? Well, the, just watching that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but uh, I mean, yeah, th th this is more just like a morality thing, not so much a physicist thing. It would annoy anybody who has worked really hard to achieve something if you just tell them, oh, well, you got there by luck, right? Because when someone tells you that, it implies that no intelligence, knowledge, decision making, hard work, or your perseverance, like it's great, but it was luck that got you there in the end. Like that'll just annoy anybody. <laughs> I just checked the house. There's probably 20, 25 people in there. You're kidding. Is that all? All? In particle physics, 25 is Woodstock. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know if 25 people is all that crazy. I mean, I, I haven't been to very many of these conferences because I do my best to avoid them. And um, I'm also an engineer, so usually we're not required to attend these things unless you're doing research. But when it comes to the audience size, I mean, if you're a particle physicist giving a presentation on your research paper, how many people can actually understand what you're talking about in the first place, right? Like, it's not like you're going out and you're watching like a movie or stand-up comedy where it's like, yeah, anyone is welcome. Like, th there's a very specific, limited number of audience members that you could possibly have when you're presenting a research paper on like high-level physics. It was not what you are a nutcase! Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> Heads up, you people in the front row, this is a splash zone. <laughs> Stop it! <Just> quit it! <laughs> <laughs> usually how these physics things go? More often than you think. <laughs> 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 
Well, as I stated, I haven't been to very many of these to speak on how often these sort of like mental breakdowns happen. Uh, but from my experience of just being around multiple physicists and um, chemists and like engineers of very like high level research positions, they, they don't usually get along. <laughs> they're, they're not usually very friendly with one another. In fact, it's almost always a contest of I'm smarter than you and here's why. Or the other one is like my research is uh, more valuable and this is the reason for it. Or it's like these are my accomplishments, what are yours? Something similar to this <laughs> I remember happened at the university that I attended. It was on the local news, a math professor and a, he taught Calc 2 and I think some mechanical engineering classes, had a uh, severe mental breakdown in his class. He started preaching about Jesus and the meaning of life, and then he stripped naked and um, ran into the hallway where security quickly tackled him to the ground. Yeah, like these breakdowns happen, but you don't really hear about them too often. This episode was really, really accurate. I'm pretty sure everything that they said in here was on point, and I didn't see a single thing wrong with any of the ideas. I mean, they didn't really talk about a lot of technology or science concepts, but just the environment of which these people live in is, uh, they got it spot on. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, go ahead and let me know in the comments what you want me to watch and commentate over next. Thank you all for watching. Stay fresh. Stay golden.